All right, Shalom, Mom, Shalom, Mom, to the elect of the nation of Israel. Before I get started, I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rechak Wadash, double honors to my apostles and my elders, a great millstone who lead, teach, and rule well. Love and honor to my fellow Akim, pushing the word in true faith and sincerity across the four corners. Shalom, Mom, peace and blessings to you, sincere listeners and sincere subscribers of the men and Dr. Great Millstone. This is the brother you dive to your land church, coming with an, another lesson to the spirit. And it's going to be entitled, Pay Attention to Ukraine. You know, because it's a lot of um, talking, you know, eyes on, you know, the situation that was, that's happening between uh, Ukraine and Russia. You know, Ukraine being on the western border um, of Russia. And, uh, uh, you know, it's already been stated that Vladimir Putin has moved um, approximately 100,000 troops to uh, the Russia-Ukrainian border. And um, it's possible that Ukraine is either um, in the process of trying to or being recruited by uh, the NATO, you know, uh, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So, uh, you know, Vlad Putin and the Russians, they understand that you know, Ukraine is a, a, a major play in terms of its, um, you know, homeland security. So, like I said, the uh, uh, title of this lesson is going to be Pay Attention to Ukraine. I'm going to get into this article here. This article is from TheHill.com, and it was uh, written or published February 2nd, 2022, uh, the year of the turn-up of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah turning up. So, uh, it's entitled... Entitled, Americans Should Be Paying Attention to Ukraine. It reads, the conflict between Russia and Ukraine feels like the pandemic, long, repetitive, and unending. The truth is, it has been going on for eight years since Russia invaded and illegally annexed Crimea. And here we are, still debating whether to expect an intrusion or incursion in, incursion or full-scale invasion by Russia of all of Ukraine, in which, uh, you know, Crimea was a, the annexation of Crimea was a a, a, a major event, you know, because um, one thing that um, NATO, uh, uh, you know, alliance countries and some of their and some of their leaders are saying is that um, Russia is uh, um, pretty much. Uh, Valid validating or uh, taking certain um, areas and places, you know, as uh, new countries, like new new land, so to speak. Like there's a that in between um, Ukraine and Russia, there's actually a, a proxy, a, a, a Russia-led coalition or Russia-led uh, annexation group who is uh, pretty much trying to break off. From Ukraine now, whether they're trying to be their own separate entity or to, you know, join and realign with Russia, that is to be seen. But that's you know that's a a, a playbook that uh, the U.S. has run as well. You know, it's called proxy wars in which they'll uh, had that in the so-called Middle East with in Iran and uh, Iraq and Afghanistan, or well, more so Iraq and Afghanistan. But you had certain leaders of certain um, groups backed by larger countries, uh, and they would, you know, pretty much do the fighting for them. You know, in which that that may very well be happening uh, here as well. You know, because there there is a, a talk, or it has been put out there that there there is a, a certain group, uh, you know, uh, uh, fighting in lands, you know, a portion of lands in between Ukraine and Russia, who are seeking uh, separation from Ukraine. In which Ukraine is a, you know, upon doing research, is a very large country. It it, it may be, um, it's it's up there as far as one of the largest countries' landmass in um, Eurasia. You know, uh, continuing on, it says right now there is lots of talk about war and peace. In which we know too that you know the talks about war and peace. I mean, it's it's biblical. You know, um, I'm gonna come back to that. Uh, I'm going to jump right to Revelation 11 real quick. Get that. Revelation 11 and 14. The second woe is past and behold, the third woe cometh quickly in which, you know, this uh, the second woe, speaking of 
World War II in which World War One and World War Two have already, you know, played out. You know, that's our those are two uh, world events that have already happened, and you know, this is a uh, uh, yet another sign and uh, token and you know, and 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 uh, a thing pump a thing for us to look at that shows that you know that this third world world's war is uh, quickly approaching us, man. You know, or quickly approaching even me saw in the world. This is Matt, uh, Matthew 24, I'm going to start at verse 4. And Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am a Mashiach or anointed, and shall, de and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And see, these are the, uh, the wars and the rumors of wars, okay, in which... Hey, there's this is a, a major global event. You know, like I said, um Russia is um making moves to uh uh you know guard themselves against US uh the United States, NATO and the, and their allies, you know, and and they understand the importance of Ukraine and this whole um system you know because one because of the size of ukraine which if i'm not mistaken ukraine actually used to be a part of the old soviet union you know before they um broke up the soviet union okay and then also the 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 closeness and proximity of uh ukraine to russia you know russia it's and it's uh, uh it's borders you know uh that's the point on that i'm gonna jump back to the article so picking back up in the article, it says, my guess is that most Americans did not watch the deliberations at the United Nations, although you can't ask for better, better political theater. The United States and Russia engaged in a full public diplomatic barroom brawl at the UN Security Council on Monday over the Ukraine, Ukraine crisis. Accusations were flying and competing versions of reality were on full display. You see, so, you know, these UN meetings, you know, these are uh, high level talks and negotiations. These, this is literally uh, checkers. I mean, slacky. This is literally chess, you know, you know, not checkers, man. You got uh, high level moves being made, you know, uh, talks and communications between certain uh, high level, high ranking officials in uh, these governments, you know, and then you got, um, you know, uh, 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 jostling for a position, you know, in, in the entirety of the, the, the global system, you know. Continuing on, it says, almost immediately after the meeting of the 15-nation council convened, the Russians objected to even holding it. You see, because, you know, Russia know that this is all BS. Russia knows that uh, NATO, you know, NATO, the United States, Okay, and certain of their allies really already are, uh, got the bullseye on them. They already know, you know, especially when it comes to the uh, relationship between the United States and Russia. They already know that the U.S. is against Russia and, you know, they're going to always be against them, you know. Uh, Russian ambassador Vasily Nebenzia accused the Americans of fomenting unfounded accusations that we have refuted and said the meeting would not help bring the count bring this council together. For those who have tried, who have tired of the news from the front lines, now is not the time to tune out, but to sit up and pay attention. You see, like there's so much going on in the world, you know, in which you know a big thing that Edom Esau does is working to do, especially through his media, is to push the whole narrative of the whole you know global pandemic. And uh, hide the fact that there's a, a lot of things going on uh, that are real, you know. Um, I believe today the U.S. government surpassed uh, $30 trillion in, in, in debt, in debt, if I'm not mistaken. Just one, you know, one thing that happened today that they're not pushing that because they're so, they're so big on pushing, you know, their, uh, their agenda and, and, and you know, Pushing a, a sense and 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 spirit of strength in which we understand this society is collapsing, man. 
all right? And like we said, we, with all this uh, dis and misinformation going on in the news, it's important to, to pay attention and pay attention to really to uh, the spirit, you know? Uh, continuing on, this seemingly faraway war is about us, our way of life, our freedom, and the fate of everything we hold dear. If you thought the Cold War was important, this is the Cold War on steroids. Man, that's heavy. I wasn't, I didn't have this written down, but I'm going to go ahead and get it. Um, this is uh, Joel 3 and verse 9. It says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles, prepare war, wake up the mighty men, let all the men of war draw near, let them come up, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning, ho your pruning hooks into spears, that the weak say I am strong. Okay, so yeah, we're letting these uh, Gentiles and these heathens know that the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shemiah who's a man of war, is, is uh, uh, preparing a, a great war, you know, to um, line up with Revelation 11 and Matthew 24, you know, the, and uh, Exodus 15, you know, the Heavenly Father is a man of war. And this is a war that it, it, um, in the article, too, it spoke about how a lot of Americans probably didn't watch this U.N. meeting, but it was a high level theater, you know, in which hey, this is a, a, a movie that the Most High has, uh, you know, preordained and predestined to play out. And now we're in the midst of watching these things, you know, play out. And we're these are things that we're proclaiming amongst the Gentiles, man. You know, to get ready for this because, hey, this is this is this this World War Three is soon to come, and it's a biblical prophecy. You know, um, verse eleven, assemble. Oh, and going to the weak, sanity is strong, in which uh, you know Russia is going to be a uh, a major component of uh, um, giving certain smaller and weaker nations. A level of confidence in the same way that America spends uh, billions and trillions of dollars to strengthen up um, the militaries of, 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 of so-called weaker countries and nations. Russia is going to be doing the same thing, whether they be whether they send um, actual uh, weapons, OK, or, or planes or tanks or uh, food. You know, those are all a hey, food is a. a Food and water is very important um, in times of war. You know, that's why there's a, a, a lot of talk going on with, you know, sanctions, you know, as far as if the Russians don't comply to uh, the, the the desires and requests of NATO, they're going to apply sanctions to Russia, in which Russia has been playing, uh, Russia and Vladimir Putin, they've been uh, planning and prepping for decades to uh, uh, for this last uh, war, war, world war that is to come. All right. Um, that's pretty much what I want to get on that. Um, I'm gonna continue on. It says, "It is important to know that there are two worlds in this story." When I visited Kiev, I saw the youthful energy in a democratic, active, and lively public square. Uh, Kiev. I'm gonna look it up real quick. I can't. Oh, it's in Ukraine. It's a Ukrainian. I think it's the capital. Yeah, Kiev is the capital of Ukraine. I just want to look that up real quick. Uh, yeah, it said it's, it is important to know that there are two worlds in this story. When I visited Kiev, I saw the youthful energy in a democratic, active, and lively public square. I went to schools and met eager young people who wanted to grow up and be like Americans. It is a place teeming with freedom. You see, so, hey, like I said, this is a a, a spiritual a, a battlefront, okay, that uh, Russia is going to go all in to fight. You know, like I said, uh, like I said, Kiev being the capital city of Ukraine and, you know, the uh, Western uh, ideology and mindset has, you know, uh, uh, infiltrated there, okay, in which, you know what that's going to produce, that's going to produce uh, uh, a spirit and a mentality to, uh, uh, that's, a, that's contrary to the Eastern uh, mentality and ideology, and it's going to be contrary, 
as well to uh, uh, Russia. All right, it's, this thing is 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 hot. I don't even want to say it's heating up. This thing is hot, you know, because uh, uh, you know for for Vladimir Putin and the Russians to move a hundred thousand troops. That's a lot. That's a lot of. That's a, a a lot of force behind you know your words, man. You know, um, continuing on it says Moscow. In winter is cold, dreary, and creaking with author authoritarian control. I visited Russia in 2013 as part of an official U.S. government team trying to convince the Russians not to close an American library. From there, we went to Ukraine to help open an American one. And you see that they go to show you that, you know, this uh this front has been a uh, uh, building for years. You know, even something as uh, small as like a library, and you know, probably they got fast food joints and stuff like that over there. You know, meet you know American television media. You know, trying to you know separate uh, that that th that former alliance. You know, trying to continue to separate that former alliance, being uh, through U uh, Ukraine and the former Soviet Union. All right. Uh, continuing on, it says this war is a study in what happens when there are competing visions of the world, and we need to be clearly on the side of the West. Now, this is Esau going to his, you know, uh, thoughts. You know, uh, to let the Ukrainians down is to let ourselves down and, and everything we believe in. What that means is we need more troops, more equipment, more economic sanctions, and more diplomatic. Di diplomacy backed by force. And you see, and it makes perfect sense that the Biden administration uh, fully withdrew out of Afghanistan because they're more likely getting ready, you know, prepping to, uh, uh, for the, 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 the front and battle against Russia. They have to, against Russia and China. They have to, you know. Um, let me see if there's anything else. I'm gonna jump down a bit. It says, uh, traditionally, traditionally, it would be America leading the diplomacy, but we are bogged down at home with the 19 inflation and a deep and paralyzing political divide. Making peace requires full-time attention and the ability to juggle multiple crises. I am not convinced we have that energy right now, although President Biden is doing his best to keep talking to Putin the way you would talk to a hostage taker. Because the thing about it is there is there is no uh, peace. There is no negotiation. You know, these these countries are already, uh, um, you know, dug into the sand, so to speak. You know, these uh, uh, high level uh, ranking political officials, they already know what's 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 uh, happening, man. They already know what's what's getting ready to go down. It's getting ready to uh, escalate to, to World War Three. All right. But Americans are distracted. Prices are high. Job, satisfa job satisfaction is low, and we are busy arguing over mass. Regardless of who creates the ceasefire, we should all pause for a moment and consider the world at large and agree that war will only make us less safe, secure, and prosperous. And that's, see, that's what they think. You know, we understand that. Hey, this is a, a matter of fact, I'm going to go back to it. I'm going to go back to it, you know. Um, just to reemphasize that point, because the, the statement, that's what I said, going to Edom Esau and his media and his warped way of thinking, you know, we understand that this is a, a, a something that must come to pass because it's all pursuant to biblical prophecy, right? So Matthew 24 again and 6, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. You see, so these are things that must come to pass. They're talking about a ceasefire and, you know, preventing certain things to happen in which it's going to happen. You know, that's, this just shows a lack of understanding of these uh, uh, people, you know, because it's going to happen. All right. And we want it to happen. We, we're looking forward to this happening, man. We sh we hope that some pop off over there in Ukraine, man. Lord willing, Lord willing, uh. Vlad Putin and the Russians, they go ahead and, and, and invade, you know, and, and, and um, push, you know, push the button, man. You know, push the, uh, 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 Biden, his administration and NATO and their allies, you know, you know, bring them to the table, man. 
you know, make them make a move. Because that just expedites and, and brings us closer to our salvation. All right. Uh, going back to the article says, regardless of who creates the ceasefire, we should all pause for a moment and consider the world at large. That's true. You know, even though it's not going to be a ceasefire, it, it may be a temporary, you know, uh, cooling down of the, you know, of the hotheads. But it's going to ultimately boil over, you know. But we should all pause for a moment and consider the world at large, you know. Matter of fact, I'm going to get this real quick before I continue reading on closing out. I kind of had some other priests lined up, but the spirit kind of shifted a different direction. Um, Amos 3. I started verse. I'll just get to the point. Amos 3 and 6. Shall the trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shai, have not done it? You see, these are things that the Most High, Yahweh Shemel Shai, it's already set in stone that these things are going to happen. You know? So trying to uh, negate or bypass prophecy, it's, it's foolish because it's going to happen. The, the words of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shemel Shai, are 100% going to happen. It's 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 un it's unstoppable. It's undeniable. It's going to happen. You know. Um, just fishing up this article, man. It says, uh, "Just show you how, how through these people are." It says, "And consider the world at large, and agree that war will only make us less safe, secure, and prosperous." And we, like I said, we understand that not to be true because the Heavenly Father, how about Shmuel and Shai is. Pushing towards uh, fulfilling his his uh, his word, okay, and uh, we're we're moving closer and closer to the kingdom of heaven. All right, so like you say here, you say so. Let's root for the good guys, and and yeah, let's root for the good guys, in which the the good guys, okay, are are uh, the righteous of the nation of Israel. You know, who are cleansed of the and uh, uh, of their sins through the and the atonement and the sacrifice of our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right, and found acceptable before the eyes of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh So let's root for the let's root for those good guys, man. All right. <laughs> and he said, and stand together in supporting America and NATO. This is the moment. This is the moment. And this is the moment to um declare that America and NATO, they're gonna be unsuccessful. America's gonna be hella unsuccessful, man. America's gonna get burned with nuclear fire. All right. And uh and a, a, a great number of former American allies are going to hate that whore. You know, the beast and the beast system are going to hate the whore, you know. But just to, you know, finish out, as I said, I had some precepts um, jotted down. Um, didn't get all of them, but, you know, it's just a spirit. But they're talking about, the, the author here was talking about standing for the good guys, standing for America, standing for... NATO, you know, nah, this, that's not what it's about. That's not going to get the job done because they're going to fall. All right. Second Samuel 22, I'm going to start at verse 26. With the merciful doubt, I'm going to start at verse 25. Therefore, the Lord, Yahweh Shemel and Shai, have recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness, cleanliness in his eyesight. With the merciful, thou wilt show thyself merciful. And with the upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. See, that's the spirit. Because it's, it's talking about the good, you know, American, NATO. Like, no, nah, American, NATO, and their allies, they've been doing all types of wicked things throughout the four corners, man. You know, for, for uh, centuries. You know, not necessarily NATO in this, in, in, you know, as an organization in itself, but, you know, these... Um, High level, these uh, governments and high level officials, they've been just doing an evil, wicked work, man. You know? Verse 27. And they've been showing no mercy, no mercy, and just being wicked, you know, to the point that they've run these countries and these land, land masses and people literally into the ground. All right? Verse 27. With the pure, thou wilt show thyself pure, and with the forward, thou wilt show thyself unsavory. And the afflicted people, thou wilt save. 
but thine eyes are upon the haughty that thou mayest bring them down. See, this is what's happening now. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, is um, uh, preparing those fruit meat for repentance, you know, cleaning, cleaning the remnant of our people up, you know, getting their minds right, their spirits right, you know, and then also the proud and the, the heathen and the wicked uh, preparing them for slaughter, you know. Verse 29, for thou art my lamp, O Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, and the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, will lighten my darkness, for by thee I have run through a troop. By my power have I leaped over a wall, going to spiritual powers that the Heavenly Father, you know, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, has given uh, uh, certain individuals at certain times, in which we're looking forward to death too. You know, here it is. You got all these uh, government political officials, you know, with the, the power of the pen, you know, moving these troops and these ships and these, you know, vehicles, yada, 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 planes. And, you know, the, the, the faithful of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shire, you know, patiently waiting upon the Lord. So his uh, 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 justice and judgments can be executed, you know. Uh, verse 31, I'm going to close out. As for the Most High, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Shai, is tried. You see, they go to show too that, you know, all these political talks to, you know, move things in a, in a way, of course, outside of what prophecy says is already going to happen. It's, it's foolish. It's a waste of time. It's vanity, you know, because what has been uh, stated to happen from the heavens by Yahweh Shem Shai will happen, all right? And this finish now says, he is a buckler to all them that trust in him. And see, this is why we continue to trust and have faith and, you know, push forward in, this, in you know, truth and sincerity, serving Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai so we can be uh, protected and preserved by the Heavenly Father in the midst of everything that is, uh, will continue to uh, uh, play out, whether it be World War Three, martial law, you know, economic collapse, um, foreign invasions, the missiles, you know, niggas, all these things, you know, we're working to be protected by these evils by serving the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, including, um, you know, the ramifications of things to come in the midst of and, and leading up to World War Three. So, I mean, that's not there, Lord. We'll even edify it once again before I close out. I want to give all praises and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rechlach Double honors to my apostles and my elders of Great Millstone who lead, teach, and rule well. Loving honors to my fellow I can push in the word in true faith and sincerity across the four corners. Shalom, Juan, peace and blessings to you, sincere listeners and sincere, sincere subscribers. Lord, will you be edified? Until next time, Shalom. Juan.